So you've made a cinematic blockbuster called, I don't know, Fishzilla? And there's only one thing I'm missing. An epic movie title. Now this kind of effect actually isn't too difficult to put together in Blender. So let's look at doing that now. Okay, our first step is choosing a typeface. Now you may have one that you already like installed, but if not, it might be worth jumping over to your favorite font library. In my case, I normally gravitate towards the font. And I'm gonna choose, let's go with a sci-fi type look. We can also type in the name of our film here. Fishzilla. Cool, I really like the look of this one, so I'm going to download that, acknowledging the donationware aspect of it. And I'm just going to extract the font to a folder. Now we don't actually need to install these fonts because we can just reference them in Blender, so let's do that now. Okay, so we have our default scene, and to start off, I'm just gonna hit A on the keyboard, X to delete everything. And to add our text in here, in the world origin, we're gonna do Shift A. Where is it? There it is, text. And to go in and edit that, we can jump from object into edit mode here. We can also hit tab on the keyboard and type in our movie title, Fish Zilla. Being kind of bland at the moment, but we need to go into our text options, font, and open up our font of choice. So where did I save it? To my downloads. Let's just choose the italic version. Very cool. Let's align this a little bit better by rotating our X on the X axis and 90. And then hitting G and X to constrain to the X axis and lining it up a little bit with the Z here in the center or Z. That's good. Now we're gonna duplicate that with Shift D. Why? Just to keep a version editable because we're about to convert this one. And right click to just drop that, move it into a new collection. I like to just create a collection called hide and then we can just uncheck that and that sort of saves it like a little backup with the editable text still. Now with that selected, we can right click, convert to mesh and add some modifiers on here as well. So over here, add modifier, start with solidify, just extrude it back a little bit, maybe something like that, and then a bevel to round off the corners. We have a bit of a mesh problem, but we can go in and fix that now by tabbing into edit mode. And what I like to do, um, particularly with tech stuff, is to select everything by hovering over the mesh or letter you want to select and tapping L and then F just to fill. And that has fixed stuff up nicely. Okay, let's set up our bevel here. We want to, I'm just gonna uncheck clamp so we can see the actual bevel. Something like that would be pretty cool. I'm gonna add a few more segments here. Let's go with four. It looks a bit smoother, but it is still faceted. So we need to adjust that by converting to shade smooth. Looks like it's fixed stuff, but it looks a bit whack in some places. So we're gonna use our bevel modifier to harden normals. And as you can see, we get a little message here going saying we have to auto smooth. So we go to object data properties, normals and auto smooth. That has fixed up those little weird normals, normal issues nicely. Okay, we're gonna want to rotate these letters per letter. So to do that, we need to separate out the mesh a little bit more. So let's tab in again, select all, hit P on the keyboard and separate by loose parts. And now everything is a loose part. Let's put that into a collection, move text. Okay. And you know, you could actually name these after the letters, uh, after the actual letters, but I'm a lazy person. 
we're also going to, with the origin in the center here, we're gonna create a empty, let's go with cube, and we'll select all the objects with the cube selected last or highlighted here, and then control P and object. Then we can move everything and the individual letters themselves. But if we want to rotate these letters, you know, do a cool kind of rotation thing, we don't wanna be rotating them all from the origin point here. So let's select all our text, right click here, select objects, and go to object, set origin. Let's go with volume center of mass. Nice. Okay, the other thing we need is a camera uh, to begin our animation, so let's add one. Shift A, camera. I'm gonna Alt R just to kill all the rotation, and then rotation X 90, and then grab and move it back. And uh, for the focal length, I'm gonna go a little bit wider, 30 mil, just so we get even more perspective in these letters. And drag out a new window here. And with control and zero, zero on the number pad, we align our camera to the view. I'm gonna hit five on the keyboard over this viewport just to switch to orthographic mode. You can do it with this button as well here and move it a little bit up so it's sort of center frame. While we're talking about the frame, let's switch to a cool 235, 234 to one ratio by just shrinking down our Y height. Nice, super cinematic. Um, yeah, cool. So that'll be our kind of our rest state for the title. Um, now let's start animating. So the simple thing we want to happen is we want it to come to a rest here. So let's add a key, I on the keyboard, location and rotation. And to save us in the future doing that, let's switch on auto key. And so going back in time, we wanna grab it and move it way back, way, way back, way. So it comes up, whoomph. And we want it to move a little bit forward just so we have time to read it and then fly off. Wow, past the camera. So, comes up, doosh, boom, nice. Um, sort of almost slowing to a stop, we want it to crawl continuously, so let's jump into the curves editor. I'm just gonna hit TET here, uh, just to hide those menus. I'm gonna switch off these as well. And select graph editor, and we can see here um, selecting the curve and hitting shift H to hide everything else. We can see what our motion looks like. So it does actually kind of stop in the middle, but we don't want that. So let's adjust the curves a little bit. So I'm gonna rotate them to point in towards each other. Then on this one, actually, because we want it to sort of explode off, we're gonna make it accelerate very, very quickly. So if we hit V on the keyboard and go to free, then we can select this out and there, the acceleration is gonna be nuts. So let's see what that looks like. Boom, off. Yeah, cool, make the machine make that a bit faster. Boom, excellent. And we kind of want these letters to rotate individually just to add that extra bit of dynamism to everything. So if we select all of our, oh, yeah, let's move our camera out of that group. We select all of our objects. It comes to a rest. Let's choose 45. Add a location and rotation to everything. And then as it sort of flies off, we kind of want to rotate these so they're all a little bit out of whack. And I'm gonna use R on the keyboard twice, so tap R twice. That goes into an orbit mode. Whoa. It's all kind of funky and disjointed. And then when it comes together, yeah. 
circle sort of maybe you want a stronger ease out of those letters so let's select all let's just select the out keys here and scale along the x nice and then we want them to go all over the place for this sort of explosion shot so where did we create the sort of explosion motion that's from frame 60. So let's add a key on all of our letter objects here at 60. I, location, rotation. And then have them explode off. So I'm just going to give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. Again, using the rotation, but I'm going to rotate them a hell of a lot more this time. A little space, a bit more space to work with. So they, they explode off every which way. Cool. Boom. Nice. Let's see, when do we actually need... We can have that out animation end a little bit later. Yeah, that's pretty cool though and fundamentally you know that's that's kind of the animation we want comes in forms explodes off thanks mm, yeah maybe a little bit faster than that explosion i'm just going to select all i'm going to select everything from 60 and beyond and then hit s in the timeline hit s and x just to scale everything out a bit so there's a bit more time yeah that feels a bit better I'm using uh, shift and the left arrow to rewind and space to play. Yeah, that feels better. And to go full screen here as well is control and space bar. Okay, that's our animation done. Um, now let's look at creating the shaders and the cool materials and various other effects around it.